I had a customer with an issue recently, and it seemed to be related to OneDrive, and they didn't even know they were using OneDrive. It seems like uh, Microsoft, Apple, and Google are doing a very good job at sucking people into uh, using their free data plans to essentially become a data vacuum cleaner. Now, I was quite surprised at uh, the OneDrive environment that I saw because it had modified the locations of uh, the pictures directory, the desktop, and the down, uh, down, uh, sorry, documents directory in a way that made it difficult to actually go back to a standard configuration. Let me show you what I mean. Get rid of that. So this machine is a standard run-of-the-mill run Windows 10 Home as of March, version 1909, March 2020, version 1909, fairly standard installation. I have not yet configured OneDrive. And if you have a look, this is the, the native location for the drive uh, the directories for the user L-E-T-T-E. If I was to go to the desktop, as you would expect, you would see uh, the desktop lives under L-E-T-T-E. The, uh, let's see, desktop files, the documents files are under also in that same location, and the pictures are also under users let. Now, there is a, a OneDrive directory that's native to the operating system. Um, it'll bug you to sign up, which we'll do in a moment. But there's nothing underneath there. So again, this is a vanilla install. I haven't done any uh, removal of any of the uh, bloatware that comes with the operating system. Nothing has been done to clean it up. This is, this is as raw as it gets with OneDrive not yet configured. Let's now configure it in the next video. Okay, we're about to log in for the first time using the OneDrive uh, interface. This computer user, by the way, is an online account. Um, there's my user name up at the top there. The um, online account is unlike the, the local account, which I do prefer uh, people uh, sometimes get tricked into using a, a online account, uh, although it's not impossible to still do a local account. It's getting increasingly difficult. Either way, this, uh, this online account is ready to go. I've put in the password. Hopefully the password is correct. And the, the native location for where OneDrive lives makes sense. It, this is where that directory existed that we saw earlier. I'll click Next. And then a OneDrive folder already exists. You would not normally see this. It's just because I've been playing around. I'm going to say use this folder. Now, um, the, the default settings are, as I told you before, was uh, the desktop, the documents, and the pictures are going to be selected. And you get uh, five gigs of free space. So let's click next, or sorry, continue, and we'll be prompted to buy more, which we're not going to do. And it's going to give us a little intro to how to use it, which we don't need to watch right now. And then I can open the OneDrive folder if I want. Now, that's kind of helpful. So you now you see Desktop, Documents, and Pictures are now underneath OneDrive. And there's a helpful file and a, a link to a personal vault, which I yet have no experience with. So let's have a look at, well, obviously these directories live underneath OneDrive. Um, let's do that again. Documents lives under OneDrive. And pictures lives under OneDrive. Confusingly, there is still a, a documents left behind. I don't know if that's the result of my experimenting, but I have seen that many times before. And notice under users, let, 
there is no longer original links to pictures and to the uh, desktop. Those are now moved. The actual contents and the entire directories have been moved to underneath OneDrive, which is kind of interesting. Uh, you may not have wanted that, and uh, you may not have intended on even using OneDrive. Uh, Let's look at the implications of trying to play around with that uh, in the next video. I've re recreated a sort of typical environment of a computer user where uh, OneDrive is configured and running. I've got files sitting here on the desktop. I've also got um, if we go to our OneDrive location here, I've got files on the desktop files in the documents folder and a bunch of pictures in the pictures uh, directory and you can see here um, the username is l-e-t-t-e -E. um, they're ignore the desktop this hangs around for some reason because that's not the desktop web which we're viewing it's this desktop under user let onedrive so the desktop lives there as we know documents lives there and pictures lives there. So that's to be expected. So this customer had, um, didn't even know they were using OneDrive, to be honest. They, their computer had been set up by somebody else or they just said yes to everything during the install. I'm, I wasn't there for the installation process. Um, now, it turned out that they had a, a, a one gigabyte um, limit on their OneDrive space, and I suspect it was because they were using Office 365, but for whatever reason, they, they were close to a limit on their space. And what was going on was they had, let's just pretend here that this would say, uh, uh, this is one gigabyte of cloud storage maximum, and they were, they were using about 300, gigabytes of that space and somebody had configured um, an Outlook backup to be writing to the documents directory. Now in this situation the documents directory lives in OneDrive, right? A better way to see that is to go to here. Is it here? Yes, and no, you could see the path. So documents lives in OneDrive and there like I said, their Outlook backups were configured to be writing to, their Outlook archives were be, being configured to write to documents. Somebody had done that, and nobody had actually done a backup. So when I went to do a backup, it hit about 600 megabytes, and that could not be stored on their OneDrive, because they had a limit to, they were very, they were 600 meg away from their limit. And that threw an error code. The uh, backup didn't work, and they didn't know why. So I came in and uh, kind of new to OneDrive. I was poking around. I saw they had 600 megs free. That makes sense. Um, I looked here to see what um, what's available with OneDrive. And I thought, okay, cool. There's a summary here of the total capacity that's being used by these directories and, and the desktop, her desktop was hugely populated with information. Um, just just too much stuff that she, she wasn't cleaning up and those files were going to uh, her OneDrive location, which didn't make much sense at the time. I was also looking at manage backup and trying to sort out what's going on here. This is the the OneDrive configuration for what things are synchronized and there's obviously three directories the desktop the documents and the pictures are being synchronized with OneDrive and I thought okay well I need to free up some space with this person's computer and uh, in order to be able to successfully make this uh, backup so I came into here and I, I thought well I, I, I believe it's probably a wiser choice to teach her to stop using the, the desktop as a garbage can basically and to clean it up stop backing it up um, and go with the traditional way of just copying well 
uh, organize documents into the documents folder and just kind of prune away with leaving stuff just randomly on the desktop. So I decided to uncheck desktop and I got an old, and a message here saying I can't, can't stop syncing the folder. The folder you tried to unselect is the Windows desktop folder, which is an important folder in Windows and is currently pointing to OneDrive. To stop syncing this folder, update your folder settings and settings backup and then try again. Okay, that sounds reasonable. So then that pops open what is being synchronized. And then I thought, well, okay, I'm, I'm gonna need to stop backing up the desktop, I guess. There's no other fine grain control here. Keep an eye on these files over here. When I hit stop backup, I get one more warning. When you stop folder backup, new files save only to this PC and aren't available from other devices. Okay, they aren't backed up or protected in OneDrive. Uh, okay, I hit stop backup and then poof. Well, uh, everyone would probably see the same reaction. Their files have disappeared. Now that you've stopped folder backup, the files you were backing up remain in OneDrive. Uh, which OneDrive? and no longer appear in your desktop folder on this PC. You can always back up this folder with OneDrive later. Okay, this has obviously created a lot of questions because Microsoft has went ahead and um, made a link here that says, where are my files? And you click it and it opens up. What does it open up? It opens up the old desktop. So that implies that the desktop I'm viewing is not the same desktop that my stuff used to be on. So my stuff is on the old OneDrive, and then what is this desktop that I'm seeing? I've started poking around and I'm looking here, and I thought, okay, this is, is this a desktop I'm viewing? A good way to test that is just make a quick folder. Okay, cool. So the desktop I'm viewing is the traditional location for the original desktop. And yet the OneDrive location where my desktop files still live are still there. Like, wow, let's read that again. Can we read it again? Luckily, you can hit start backup. You can get your files back again. You're obviously viewing a different desktop and then Unfortunately, I have to come back here. Let's see if I can get to the same message by doing this same thing again. I'm going to say stop backup. When you stop backup, da -da -da -da, and where's that message? Now that you've stopped folder backup, the files you were backing up remain in OneDrive. Where? Which OneDrive? My OneDrive? my OneDrive desktop, or OneDrive the cloud. Like seriously, who writes this stuff? And no longer appears in your desktop folder on this PC. You can always back up this folder with OneDrive later. Now at this point, I thought, this is crazy. I'm just, eventually I sorted out how, how to get her files back, at least so that they were visible. And then I started to poke around and learn this a little bit more. And I was quite surprised to find there's a lot of people complaining about this issue. And there's no real way, uh, no real simplified way to just uninstall OneDrive and get your system back to the way most people are familiar with, where your documents are in rational locations and get them out of this OneDrive location because it has implications on doing backups and stuff like that as well. Ignore those Greg messages there. So I decided to document everything that I learned and go over the process. So we'll go over the process with you and we will uninstall OneDrive and get it back to the way it was before we started. So when I first encountered this issue a few days ago, I just made some notes for myself and left it at that. But as I dug into it further, I realized this this is a video waiting to happen, and, and therefore that's why this video is being made. And it's a work in progress, because as I work at it, I realize I'm learning as I go.
So my notes in progress are here. You can see the Google URL up there if you want to try typing it. I'll probably link to it in this in this video later. It's uh, it's called removing OneDrive, and uh, here's a obvious uh, summation of what's going on. The pictures, documents, and desktop folders are are moved into some username OneDrive. And I've got images here of doing a, a DIR command just to prove that the, the locations in a command shell are where they originated and then, oops, uh, that doesn't look so good. I'll fix that later. Where they live um, after OneDrive's installed. And uh, now this particular process to uninstall OneDrive and get things back, it's not, uh, it's not as easy as you'd hoped. It, it might eventually be easy, but as of March 2020, it certainly is not easy. And uh, it's a, like I said, a multi-step process. We have to first do a deselection of um, the, from manage folder backup. That'll save us a little bit of work if we do that in advance. There is a possibility that uh, you'll be in a situation where you've you've hacked out um, OneDrive without doing this and it'll need a, another step to fix it. But uh, we'll go over this, don't worry, this is just uh, a process of documentation right now. So uh, step one again, deselect desktop documents and pictures. Step two is to actually unlink the device or computer from OneDrive. And then the third step is uninstall OneDrive. If you don't do that, it's funny, um, OneDrive sort of links itself automatically. Like, like they're really trying hard to to uh, be a hoover for your, your data, and it will. So you have to get OneDrive out of there. Or maybe you can find a place to, to stop its services from starting. But uh, for my use, I just uninstalled it. Um, then uh, we have to go through a, a slightly unique process to move the desktop documents and pictures folders. It's not the traditional way of moving stuff around. Um, it's a completely different way that I was not familiar with, and I couldn't find a lot of documentation on this. And then lastly, if you didn't manage to do step one, you may be needed. You may be needing to go into the registry, which is a lot of fun for newbies. And I'll go through that. So uh, we'll do this in a sec. Here's the manage folder. We'll be stopping all three of those. And we'll see that in a sec. And then the unlinking, we'll do that in a sec. There's a button there for unlinking. And then un uninstalling is super easy. And then the last part is doing a moving of the locations for these three directories. And it's doing a kind of different method that I've never seen before, but I'm familiar with now. When we're all done, the OneDrive uh, directory should be empty. And then if you're unlucky that you did it in a funny order, you might have to go into the Windows registry, which is always fun. And uh, I've got links to what the registry looks like before and after doing any kind of edits and uh, a way of doing the registry changes. So that's the process we're about to get to. Let's, uh, let's hit it next live. Okay, yay, it's time to lose OneDrive. So let's first go to its settings. There's three steps that you want to do. Hopefully you get a chance to do them. So you go to Manage Backup, assuming OneDrive is installed. You go to Manage Backup, and we're going to stop um, the synchronization of these three locations. We're going to hit Stop Backup, Stop Backup, and Close. And don't panic, your files are disappearing, but you'll be able to find them later. Uh, stop Backup, Close, Stop Backup, and Close. Okay, do not hit Start Backup. So that is Part 1. Part 2 is to unlink this PC. That's the easy one. Gone. Woo. Do not log in. And as quickly as you can, like don't even reboot because it'll come back very quickly. You can go to control panel 
and you can go to the traditional way of uninstalling which is programs and features <clears throat> or you can go any other routes there's so many with Windows 10 you can go to where are we uh, all settings and apps and then good luck finding it that way I kinda like this way uninstall okay after this is done OneDrive is hopefully gone and it would not be a bad idea to reboot it can't do any damage so I'm going to do that and I'll see you when it reboots alright so now that OneDrive is uninstalled we're going to need to move these three uh, directories back to the traditional locations and what I mean is we've got OneDrive pointing here these, these, this is still where all our stuff is right we've got OneDrive pictures OneDrive documents and OneDrive uh, desktop and we need to get them back uh, to what you might be expecting now the traditional way of um, getting things to move and trust me I tried that let's make sure I can find it is to right click on a location right click on one of these objects and if it is one of these special kinds of library objects you have a location button and there you traditionally with Windows 7 you can go through a process of either hitting restore default or move and you would uh, be able to move those files without getting an error um, however after uh, after OneDrive has been uninstalled I was getting uh, an unusual error it's, it's an error that actually pointed me to the registry page which we'll we'll see in a few moments and that registry page uh, made a recommendation for using the traditional method of moving these files and it it still didn't work uh, luckily I found some other references to uh, documents to talk about how to how to do this properly and it's a, a completely different method and we're going to do it now so we're just going to highlight all three of these one at a time so here's pictures I'm going to go home I'm going to go move to and then I'm going to choose location now it's important to be careful here we're going to go to the person where we're going to move these but we're not going to go any further down so let the the, the pictures directory and everything underneath it is going to land in let which is the the native location for the pictures I'm going to hit move and if there's any kind of replacing I'm going to say replace I'm going to do the same thing for documents uh, whoop I went with a traditional way of doing that home move to choose location and the same thing users let don't go any further some of these will give me errors because I've been playing around with this stuff so much and going back and forth between VMs that I might have a bit of overlap but in in a clean system you shouldn't get any kind of messages like that the last one to do is desktop home move to choose location and put it into sort of the root user your home directory this is called the home directory I'm gonna hit move and no messages Whew. so now OneDrive is empty as we would expect and then hopefully I see stuff in the desktop hopefully I see stuff in downloads and lastly hopefully I see I see my valuable pictures in pictures so that looks really good now it's a good idea to kind of get a top level view not just from these links here because it's hard to tell where you're going with those links we've got uh, whoops I didn't mean contacts desktop that makes sense documents make sense uh, where's the other one pictures make sense and then after that's all done you might want to just check the links for that's kind of confusing but you've got quick access downloads documents pictures desktop aha desktop 
We're going to have to fix that one. And that's okay. You may not get that. It might be a, a holdover from all the experimenting we'll do. But you'll see a reference to how to fix something like this in the next chapter. You probably won't get this message. Music should be normal. Music, uh, video should be normal because we haven't played with that. And then once again, we've got another references to all of these things. Pictures is cool. And we've already been through the user's environment going this way from the top down. So, thankfully, un it's now uninstalled. OneDrive is now uninstalled. The documents have been moved around to their proper locations, and we've almost got no errors. But uh, there is going to be a reason to go into the registry in some situations, in this situation especially, and I'll show you that in the next video. In the previous video, you saw that uh, there was a problem that uh, I had. It was almost 100% clean, but there was a link here to the desktops, to the desktop that would show an error. And uh, it wasn't in the registry, actually. I wound up right-clicking on Quick Access and going to Options. And down here, there's an option for clearing uh, the File Explorer history. And it actually solved the problem. So we didn't need to go into the registry for that. But let's create a need to go into the registry on this system here. I've kind of got OneDrive going again. And as you recall, I mentioned that if you were to uh, be in a situation where you did not go to this setting and stop these backups prior to the uninstallation, when you, when you um, stop these backups, it actually does make some registry changes, uh, which won't bite you later. But let's, uh, let's simulate uh, having to need to go into the registry to make some changes. So I'm going to skip that first step. I'm going to unlink this PC. And then I'm going to uninstall the, um, the uh, OneDrive software. So let's do that. So we'll do that right now. Still waiting. Okay. So the software is uninstalled and we still haven't moved our our OneDrive files over. So let's just run through that here. I'll do a real quick overview. Here's our here's our files, our OneDrive files. And again, we're going to uh, highlight the pictures. We're going to move to choose location. We're going to go to the C. Hopefully this goes well. We don't get any errors. Good stuff. Those are moved. Same thing with, uh, what are we working on? Documents doesn't really matter. We're doing the same thing for all three of these locations. No messages. And then the last one, I don't know if it's highlighted. Home, move to, choose location. It's okay. Up here, users, let move. Okay, cool. So assuming that things are all set up now, if I was to... Um, those documents are moved. Let's let's have a look to see if quick access points to the right locations. It does. And then this PC, hopefully we'll get one error. Okay, good. So that's what I'm expecting. Uh, the location isn't available for the documents directory and I'm pretty sure downloads is fine. And I'm pretty sure music, and I think pictures will be broken as well. So yeah, the the, this is a, a shell environment here, and when we're clicking on those things, um, those shells is referencing still some some locations. I mentioned that here in the documentation. Uh, you get any of these errors, and it, it references a particular location in the registry and, and a support document on, on how to do that. Now, let's first warn that uh, the registry is not a, a toy. It is a 
a massive database. It's very easy to get lost in there. Everything looks the same. There is a direct path towards where you want to go to make an edit. And if you're, as long as you're careful, as long as you're um, very safe, you'll be fine. But don't go willy-nilly running around deleting stuff because you could render your system unbootable. Just be super duper careful and sane. Now, the documentation um, that we're going to refer to the Microsoft documentation actually refers to the error that I was originally getting in trying to move a folder. Remember I was telling you that the old way of moving the folder just doesn't seem to work and I was getting this error. This is the error I was getting, which is kind of neat. Anyways, that doesn't really matter. What we're going to be doing is going into the registry and following along with uh, this path. So let's do that right now. What we do is we hit start and we type reg edit and hit enter. Say yes to proving our administrative qualities. And luckily the registry editor tool remembers where you were last, but uh, we're going to actually, whoa, we didn't mean to do that. We're going to refer to this path here, current user software Microsoft. So up here at the top, there are several categories. Current user is the first you hit and then software and then Microsoft back up to the path here. We want Windows, current version, and Explorer. Windows, whoa, where were we? Windows, current version, and Explorer. Okay, and then the last entry is user shell folders. User, oh, there we are, user shell folders. So this is the part of the Windows registry that refers to what you see, some of the things that you see here, especially the ones that are broken, we hope. So editing this thing is, is actually kind of simple. What we really want to do is make them all look like they have this user profile in the beginning. The, the end destination, desktop, favorites, is, is going to be the same. But you'll notice there are some references here to the old location, C users let OneDrive. We're going to fix anything that has the C users OneDrive uh, location here, okay? So that's super duper easy. What we're going to do is, I, what I like to do, is find one that doesn't have C in it. So we're just gonna double click on this one. And I'm going to copy everything, including the slash. I'm gonna right click and copy and hit cancel. I don't need to make changes to that one by clicking okay. Then I'm gonna to go to any that have the C path on it. Highlight everything, including this last slash, and then right click and paste. Okay, no point in typing all of that. You can just use the copy and paste. Paste that one out. And I don't see any more there. Two more to go. And one more. Right click, paste. Okay, I see no more references to C. So I'm going to close this out. And we need to sort of refresh the registry. There's a hard way to do it. Um, which I'm not going to show you. There's a real easy way to do it, which is a reboot, and a kind of a simpler way to do it, which is just log out and log back in. So let's do that. Sign myself off. Sign myself back in. And crossing fingers that we're finally done, the removal and reconfiguration of OneDrive back to our normal environment. Let's go first with quick access. Downloads make sense. Documents is full. Pictures, that's exactly what we want. It's no idea what those are from, but it's not from me. Desktop makes sense. Documents is fixed. Music has never been touched. Pictures is back. Excellent. And then kind of a top level view Let's go back to users let and make sure that uh, what we're expecting is is looking good. Uh, pictures. That looks fantastic. 
you'll probably notice that OneDrive still is there. It's empty now because it's not being used at all. And you could leave it that way. You can delete OneDrive. I don't see any implications on deleting the OneDrive directory. So there you go. A lot of work, a lot of stuff learned, but that is how you get rid of OneDrive and bring your system back to the way it was before you installed it. Have fun.